Hello and welcome to another Android Studio and Kotlin tutorial. My name's Cal and in today's tutorial we're going to be building a simple timer. Our timer we're going to put onto a service, so that means that it can run in the background so it's not running on the main UI thread. And that has a lot of advantages, mainly being number one, if you rotate the screen then the timer will continue to count. Number two, if you put the app to the background and you do something else and you come back, the timer should continue to count as expected. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to be looking at timers as well as services. But yeah, let's jump into it. Cool. So creating a new Android Studio project, empty activity. I'm going to call this timer on service tutorial. Our programming language is Kotlin and just hit finish to create the Android Studio project. Firstly, we're going to head into our main activity and just work on a simple layout. So I'm going to change the parent layout to a linear layout, setting its orientation to vertical. And then with our text view, we're going to remove the constraint layout stuff. We're going to change the text to three sets of zeros. And then we're just going to give our text view a little bit of padding. We're going to set the text color to black, as well as setting the text size to 60 SP. We're going to set the text alignment to center and the width, we're going to give it match parent. And then we're just going to give it an ID, just calling this one time text view. Below our text view, we're going to create a constraint layout, width, match parent, height, wrap content, padding, 10 DP. And then inside our constraint layout, we're going to add in a material button. Width and height of wrap content, I'm going to give it a text of start, so this is going to be our start stop button. And then for its constraints, I actually find it easier to do this in the design view with constraint layout. So I'm just clicking to the side because I want to make it sit to the left of our parent. And then I'm just going to copy and paste down that material button, rename the text of this one to reset. I'm going to set that one to sit in the right of our container. And then I'm just going to give both of those buttons an ID, so reset button and start stop button. And then just making sure that they both take up an even amount of space. So we've just got one button to the left, so our start stop button and our reset button to the right. And for whatever reason, I had to type in the constraint end to start of our reset button. But yeah, that's looking good. We've got two evenly spaced buttons. Cool. So next we're going to add in some icons for our buttons. I'm just going to right click and say new vector asset and then select this play button. So we want to have a play button, a pause button and a restart button. Right click and new vector asset and that should just create a new vector asset inside our drawable folder. And you can see if we open up this folder here and open up the pause, it's just created this XML file for us. And now we can go into our material button and just say app icon is equal to our play arrow. And for our reset, we're going to assign it to our replay. Cool. So that wraps up our layout. Next, we're going to head into our build gradle and enable view bindings. So we just need to type build features and then view binding is equal to true. In previous Kotlin tutorials, I've been using synthetics, even though they're depreciated. So I thought I'd have a go today at using view bindings. Anyway, getting back on track now, we're just going to right click and create a new Kotlin file. I'm going to call this timer service. Our timer service class is going to extend service. I'm just going to hit alt enter to import the service class. If we click on this error message, it's saying we need to override the on bind function, but we don't actually want to do anything here. So we're just going to return null. And below that, I'm just going to declare a timer variable, just calling it timer. We're going to create a companion object. This is just to store a couple of strings that we want to reuse. The first one I'm calling timer updated, and this can really be whatever you like. We also need a second string. So I'm just going to duplicate that line. I'm just going to call this one time extra. Then we're going to override the onStart command function. We're just going to say value time is equal to intent get double extra. We're going to use our time extra string and a default value of zero. And I realize now the timing of this might be confusing, but essentially later in the tutorial, we're going to be passing from our main activity, the time variable via an intent to our timer service. Cool. But anyway, next we're going to say timer schedule at fixed rate. We're going to create a new time task, which we're going to pass our time. Our delay is going to be zero and our period is going to be a thousand and that's in milliseconds. So that's one second. We're going to return the flag start not sticky. Also, we're going to remove the question mark from intent to make it non-optional. So next we need to create our time task. I'm going to create a private inner class calling it time task and it takes a private variable called time which is of type double and our time task extends timer task. We're going to override the function run. Inside here we're going to create a new intent. We're going to pass it our timer updated string. We're going to say time plus plus so adding one to time. Intent dot put extra we're going to give it our time extra as well as our time double variable and then we're going to say send broadcast giving it our intent. And so the final thing we need to do in our timer service is just override the on destroy function and just say timer cancel. So when the service is destroyed we want to stop our timer from counting. Cool. So we're going to head back into our main activity.kotlin. We're going to declare a private late init variable calling it binding, which is of type activity main binding. And then below our on create, we're going to say our binding is equal to our activity main binding inflate, giving it layout inflator. And then we're going to set our content view to our binding.root. 
And now we can call our binding and just referencing our start stop button. We're going to set a non click listener, which is just going to call a function. We're going to call it start stop timer. And we're going to create that just below. Then I'm going to duplicate that line, referencing our reset button, creating another function, calling it reset timer. Then at the top, we're going to declare a variable calling it timer started, which is equal to false. We're going to create another variable, which is a later knit variable, calling it service intent, which is of type intent. And then one more variable, just calling it time initialized to 0.0. .0. Inside our onCreate, we're going to initialize our service intent. So it's equal to an intent, just giving an application context and our timer service class. And then below that, we're going to register a receiver. A receiver requires a broadcast receiver, which we haven't created yet. So I'm just calling that update time and an intent filter, which we're just going to say intent filter and giving it our timer service timer updated. So that's just our timer updated string from our timer service class. Next, we need to create our update time broadcast receiver. So I just said private val update time, which is of type broadcast receiver is equal to object of broadcast receiver. And that's just automatically overridden the on receive function. Our intent, rename that to intent and our context to context. And then I'm going to say time is equal to our intent, get double extra, giving it our timer service time extra string and a default value of 0.0. .0. I'm going to say our time text view dot text is equal to our get time string from double. So we haven't created this function yet either, but we're just going to pass it through our double click on the error message and create that function just below. And it's going to return a string. We're going to say our result int is equal to time round it to an int. And then we're going to say our hours is equal to our result in percentage sign 86,400 divided by 3,600. Basically what we're doing here is we're taking our time double and we're turning it into the hours, minutes and seconds components, which we can then pass to another function, which we're going to call make time string. And this function is just going to format our hours, minutes and seconds into a readable string that we can then put into our time text view. So I'm just going to rename this to min and seconds just to make it a little bit shorter. Equal to string format, giving it a percentage sign 02D, so to two decimal places and then the little semicolon and then 02D three times. And then we just need to pass it in our hours, minutes and seconds. Then I'm going to copy and paste our reset timer and start stop timer and just put them a little bit higher. And inside our start stop timer, we're going to say if our timer started we're going to stop the timer otherwise we're going to start our timer and we're just going to create two more functions so a stop timer function and a start timer function and then in our start timer we're just going to say service intent put extra giving it our time extra string from our timer service as well as our time and then we're going to say start service giving it our service intent now we need to make our start stop button look like a stop button start stop button text is equal to stop and just changing the icon to pause and then we're just going to say timer started is equal to true cool so we can copy everything from our start timer into our stop timer and we want to do the opposite for each of those things so we're going to say stop service giving it our service intent we're going to change the text to start and the icon to the play arrow and timer started is equal to false now inside our reset timer we're just going to call our stop timer function set time back to 0.0, .0 and we're going to set our time text view text equal to our get from time string from double and just giving it our time cool and then last and most importantly we just need to head into our android manifest and we need to declare our service and so inside our application tag we're just going to say service giving it a name of our timer service Nice, so let's build and run this now. You can see that we can start the timer and it starts counting up from zero. You can pause or stop the timer, you can reset it. But yeah, the main thing about this is that it is running on a service, so it's independent from the UI thread. So I don't think the emulator quite does it justice, but you could rotate your screen if this was on a real device and the timer will continue to count. I hope you enjoyed this Kotlin and Android Studio tutorial and I'll catch you guys in the next one.